Good afternoon. It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We got that building pretty well set up for the Linister auction open house on Tuesday, the day the auction closes. Big weekend, of course. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so we're not going to be in the office tomorrow or Friday or the rest of the weekend. And Monday night, we're on KCPT for the Antique during Antiques Roadshow for their on air fundraiser for the Fine Art and Antique Appraisal Fair they have coming up in April. So watch us Monday night in Kansas City on KCPT. But I'm going to do a quick video of mainly the Linister pieces. You'll see some Sabatez pieces as we go through. But I'm going to focus on the Linister pieces in this auction. And you can see we have pieces hanging in the hallway. Everything you did, the, Th the Thorn of Crown series, the uh, early pieces really inspired uh, by and influenced by Salvador Dali. There's three paintings of that style. One of my favorite paintings is still this uh, Leroy Crump signed piece that is Linister's work, uh, but it's all trompe l'oeil. There's nothing, there's no actual tape attached, there's no labels, that's all painted on there. He was a really uh, f fanatic for details. Great, he did a great, had a great sympathy and empathy for like uh, memories and farm life almost, these really kind of stark, he's almost called them Andrew Wyeth and their starkness. You know, very, you know, a lot of negative space with a, a piece or two as the focus as he got on in his career. He did a lot of lithograph work. We have framed pieces. We have drawings of his that are framed. There's one of the Camisol series that he did. Another one of the big early pieces that looks like a Dolly piece there. George is one of his lithographs. It's a huge litho as well. The study for the labor exchange is pretty cool, and the labor exchange coal mine is a great painting. We'll see that in a little bit. That was when he was really influenced by Thomas Hart Benton, of course. So he was trying to focus, like I said, on the Linister pieces, on the pieces in the Linister auction. So he taught community university courses on wine, and he uh, drew up that sign, and it's kind of a fun piece to have in the auction. And I think that is the last of the surrealist type pieces. Let's head to the front room. You can see this table here is full of lithos and drawings and studies and sketches. A lot of these are sold by the group. You never know what to find at Artist Estate and the case in point. This is a uh, pair of Jan Stenerud shoes from 1969-1970. Basically I talked to Jan last week. These are definitely his shoes from the time of Super Bowl IV but not worn in Super Bowl IV. Then, of course, we have Mike Garrett's helmet, again, from the same time frame, uh, 6970, right in there. It's not Super Bowl worn, but it's from that time frame. Uh, talking to Dale Stram, Hank's son, he figures that uh, Bobby Yarbrough got those pieces to the source for Linister, and I can, I think I put a little bit more information about that in the listing. He was a friend of and widely influenced by Thomas Hart Benton in the 70s. And that painting there of the saddle is definitely indicative of that. The colors, the you know, regional style, everything about it is very much Benton-esque. Let's see. Oh, and of course the big painting of Jan's shoes from 1970. So we know, we know this painting was painted in 1970. So he had to have the shoes before he painted it, which means that those shoes have to be from prior to 1970. Is there a Lannister tuck back there? Nope. There's a lot of... Lannister painted these little panels a lot. You can see we have some of the props that were used in the paintings. And uh, so he liked those panels quite a bit. Let's see, is there anything Lannister here? Like I said, there's a lot of Sabatez hanging around already for the next auction. Really nice, again, just a great, kind of a stark, just cowboy boots on top of a pie safe, kind of, a, just a neat, neat piece. And then the depth and, and quality of the background work kind of makes that little sailboat jump off the panel. Really, really like this painting here. I believe it's an old antique headset on a brick. Uh, you can take that for what it means as you, uh, I know I kind of, you know, imply or infer uh, talking to phone banks from 
other countries when you're trying to get something resolved, when you're calling for tax customer support. Uh, he did a lot of paintings, drawings, lithos, etc. for jesters, and that is the first of the group. Nice thorn of crowns. You might notice that the uh, it looks better now. You know, Amy's a professional artist, and so a couple of the pieces we had touched up here because they got scratched in the in his studio over the years, and so we have made note of that. There are pictures before and after, but we just thought we'd make it easier for people to put them right in their house. So you can see this cabinet here is full of jester work, which is kind of fun. Um, everything from you know different people dressed and painted as the jester so and then there's the hand puppet that was his inspiration again another camisole piece i think that is all from sabatez here we have uh another one of the regionalist type pieces and of course the big coal mine piece there is a nice great regionalist piece nice large size more oils on can on board. You know, he lived in Chicago. That was where he first worked and, stu and studied and painted. And so the Cubs always had a spot in his heart. These are from Andy Cap or of Andy Cap's Bar, which was a place here in Kansas City in the 70s that got burned down. So it doesn't exist anymore. Drawing of the uh, Cubs fan hat. And another... Nice little Linister painting. He liked the Thorn of Crowns. Uh, interesting perspective. There's five different paintings and they're all different. Again, here's another piece of his. Has a real Bob Byerly look to it. Uh, a lot of his work does. This uh, really sentimental type quality to it that Byerly has as well. Hey Bruce, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Part of an artist's estate is sometimes you have a lot of some things. He liked lithographs. He sold quite a few, but there's uh, great dealer stacks here that you could have, uh, you know, buy for inventory and go forward with that. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, Bruce. Hope you have a good one with you and your, with your family. Getting towards the end of this wall here is, both walls, these, both of these walls are here full of Linister pieces. Love the old studio picture he drew for his original studio in Chicago. Uh, that's part of the auction as well. Drawing of a jester. And again, more drawings and prints and watercolors and the bee, the bee smoker is a nice painting. Love the texture. And uh, kind of really dig the lunchbox there. Dark painting, but still very interesting. And a lot of these pieces, he just didn't want to sell. He just liked them, so he never did offer them for sale. There's a fun painting, Bulger. The gasket box, the little toy soldier, and the Harley hat. Portrait of Tom uh, in the regionalist style as well. And more Linister over here. There's a, what about 200 lots of Linister and related in this auction. You see, we have, I think I scanned past that pair of gloves, and they're used in several pictures and paintings. Another. Thorn of Crowns, Crown of Thorns. <laughs> this painting here is getting a lot of interest. The uh, skull and the jester suit is kind of an interesting piece. Another Benton piece. Another jester piece. Love the little painting of the potato growing in the glass jar. An earlier piece of his in the auction, uh, 1960s, 70s, still in Chicago at that point. But the glass jar is actually done really, really well. The roots are well done. Everything about that painting is just really sweet. Um, and that's a great little painting there. The uh, thing is called Dreamers. Um, kind of a fun piece. Let me slide behind the showcase here. This is probably his most important painting. The hog jacket. Uh, see the blue ribbon there from a uh, Kansas City Art Fair in 2000. Uh, he really, really liked that painting, and it's really well done. It's a neat piece as well. Obviously, he had an issue with shoddy mission and plumber. <laughs> didn't like to have to pay to have a valve replaced that he didn't think it needed replacing. So, a few pieces by a friend of his, Luis Cuevas. 
in the auction. Now let's see, inside the case, there are three sculptures that we assume were made by him because there was nothing else. They were in his studio and there's no reference to any other artists on them. Those are all props that he had and we're selling that as a nice big lot. More pieces. Kind of really dig the Pearl Coffee Honduras uh, little painted piece there. That's the Harley Davidson hat that's featured in I think two paintings. Great 1950s Harley hat. We also have, I walked by it already, the uh, Linister's easel. Love that sweet little teddy bear. Walked by his easel, uh, the chair that he sat in, and the, there's a leather saddlebag, which is kind of interesting. And again, more paintings there. Again, another reference to the Shiny Mission Plumber. The painting in the center with the skull and books is just a really well composed little painting. And so on and so forth. Amy's over here working on the Sabatez auction catalog as we're working as I'm working on this. So thank you all for watching. I'm going to uh, walk in the front room again and point out his chair because I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, the Harley pieces are fun, but the chair, this is what he sat in. This is what was at his easel. You know, nice Edwardian era painting chair. And that easel that Jan's shoes is sitting on is Linister's easel. So thank you all so much for watching. I really, yeah, Damien, we like his work a lot too. It's a, it's a really well done and interesting. A lot of different themes throughout and uh, really excited to offer it to the public. If you have any other questions, let us know. Post messages here. Send us a direct message. Give us a call at 816-283-3633. Share this video with your friends if you think anybody else might be interested in some of the interesting artwork in this auction. Uh, otherwise, have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving weekend, and we will talk to you soon.